Hi, I'm Koji, and this is Zero Platoon. The first instrument I ever like touched was my my father's guitar. He was a service member. I used a, a commander in the Navy. My grandfather on my mom's side was a chief master sergeant, so I grew up getting my groceries from the commissary and, you know, loving airplanes and hearing stories about submarines. And it was really good uh, having a personal connection because I think, you know, for as much criticism as levied upon the military, uh, you, we don't ever view it on that intimate scale of, of family and friendship and community and, and that brother and sisterhood of the military. It's, it's totally there. And so for whatever the shortcomings are uh, in terms of the institution, because there's always going to be that, whether you're in the music industry or in the military or in the government or you're down an accountant or something, there's, there's always, there's always going to be um, dysfunction. And so to know, to know what it's like to be the, uh, the son of a service member and, and see what it looks like to serve, you know, especially in the way that uh, my father did it. There are so many impressive people, so I definitely have a lot of respect for him and for his colleagues. When he was stationed in Japan in the Navy, he bought a, guitar, a Yamaha guitar secondhand. It's a classical guitar, and that's what um, traditional Hawaiian players will play. And he was born and raised in Hawaii. He, I grew up listening to him play with his Hawaiian buddies in Central PA. The first time that I ever strummed a guitar and that golden sound, and even though it was just all the open strings, like it just so grabbed me. You know, years later that I realized that my father's folk and soul music was my punk and hip hop. You know, and that these forms were so related to his experience as a young man. And that one day he walked in and he was like, oh, I know you listen to like political punk bands like Propaganda or Refused or whatever. He's like, I think you'd really like this guy Pete Seeger. He has a lot to say. And I listened to that. I remember listening to this live record and just weeping and being like, it was one of the most powerful things that I ever heard. And I think at that moment, um, a lot of things coalesced for me. I'd been reading about, um, you know, bands like Minor Threat or Fugazi in DC that were taking like political action. I had been paying attention and throwing my own benefit shows, but without like real context. And then when I started to see that it's part of a greater line greater lineage and that folk music extends far past modern recording history. And in fact that like it ties us to all of human history in terms of that human need to express ourselves and tell our stories. That was very powerful for me and I think in that moment I realized um, I'd like to do music, but I'd also like to do it um, with a community perspective and a real commitment to service. You're doing something you love, but it also serves a greater purpose, a greater whole. There's nothing more fulfilling to me. Um, I'm not someone that like writes in character or even speaks in really specific narrative because I want my songs to evolve with me and grow with me. And I want any listener to kind of be able to project themselves. Sure, it's the artist meeting, and I want to understand where they come from and the context and what they're trying to say. But I mean, me as a listener, a lot of that's just for me. So I want it to just be for listeners. But honestly, if I'm being real, I never wanted to be the singer. The reason I'm a singer is because the cool kid in our band who was the drummer, the we bought a microphone, didn't realize you need a microphone stand. And so we had to hang the, hoard, the, the cord through the rafter and it wouldn't reach down to him, so I had to sing it to the microphone in the basement, in his mom's basement. The reason I stayed singing is because I ran a nonprofit, and the only way to get people to my benefit shows was if my band was playing, because I was always the one out there, like, you know, networking and handing out my flyers. I was always the organizer, the person that wanted to be behind the scenes, and it's still mortifying for me to be out in front, because at the end of the day, I want to be the person that supports the bigger thing that's happening. So the fact that I have a career being a solo artist is just the most absurd thing that has ever happened to me. Fury came from a place be, uh, of, of avoidance where I spent like three years and doing music where I'm playing 150 to like 200 shows a year for that many years straight. I got away from what it meant 
when I stopped to think about it, all this interpersonal stuff started flooding back and things I hadn't reconciled you know, within myself. And I just didn't realize that I had fallen in love and I didn't realize that love is something worth fighting for. You know, I've tried to make meaning out of service and meaning out of community and meaning out of my craft and my trade while forgetting and kind of neglecting um, sort of the things that make life sweet. And so when I kind of returned to that, I, I just came up with this batch of songs that were really taking a hard look at what I dealt with person to pit person. Me, now as an adult, this adult I've become through music, what does it mean to, um, to have romantic love? To exist on a more intimate scale. So Fury definitely comes from this place of avoidance, um, but also a place of reconnection. And I think that's the power of music. When you feel dehumanized because of the different institutions and mechanisms of society, the arts are really that pathway to tap into ourselves. How do we access our wholeness, you know, in the face of such brokenness? And to me, my answer has always been music. It was a real pleasure to discover things about myself by writing a song like Fury. I was like, whoa, I didn't know. I didn't know I could feel. And here I am feeling and singing about it, you know. Like I feel like I came from the lowest low. Like it's a new low. I'm now 28 and to be like the lowest I've ever felt and the, 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 the greatest sense of darkness I've ever felt, I've just come through. And I didn't know that I could get through it. I just had a total disregard for like, am I doing okay? And I didn't realize I couldn't be efficient and I couldn't really serve people if I didn't do that work. I thought like I would attain this like level of wellness or like enlightenment or knowledge or whatever by like expending everything on trying to make the world a better place without ever thinking about like, how am I doing? And so I lost sight of music. I lost sight of what it is to be a son, a brother, a citizen. I would never write about love because I was so afraid to, to touch it and it took falling in love with the person and not being worried about the result. We don't realize that it's the act of doing it that is so important. It's not the end result. And, and it took me putting myself out there and being brave and being unafraid of failure. Or not that I was unafraid, but that willingness to face it. It took me really like embracing the fact that I had feelings for someone, that I wanted to fight for this person, and, um, and to see where it goes and not worry about what happens, but just to know that I did it right. In doing that, it made me remember what was so important about fighting to become this musician, become this artist. And that's why I, I will always come back to that, uh, come back to this point of like, wow, music is so deeply powerful and moving. And we get distracted by the marketing and the superficial aspects of it and the industry. And we forget that it's just what's happening. The, the most real things can happen in a room with just a few people in them and it's just like you know one person or a band playing to like a handful of people and are we willing to humble ourselves to accept that it can happen there even though society tells us it should look different so to be truly yourself and to arrive as a whole person or a person trying to be whole in the face of like just unending infinite brokenness of our society and so I sing truly to say like loudly that I exist and it's a part of my practice of just showing up and saying like, even on the days that I fall short, that I'm trying to be this whole person, that I'm trying to show up and I'm trying to love in spite of all the odds, you know? But yeah, that's my new song, Fury. But yeah, sonically it came from a place too that was like, I didn't know what I liked about music because I had played so much. I played so much where I felt like I poured myself out that I wasn't filling my glass up with anything. So I started going seeing bands that were important to me in college, like Super Chunk, or Built to Spill, Guided by Voices, Neutral Milk Hotel, Mission of Burma, like, so many bands. I just went on the spree of seeing shows. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, I, rem I remember what was so important or so exciting about this, and I think the sound really re reflects that sense of reconnection. Having a bed to eat her, I couldn't her, the middle of the world. Of my mind, the fury I stepped in, the fury I leave. Coming a bit too close, but I had to know, cause I pulled in myself. The second days go by, the fury I stepped in, the fury I leave. Whatever happens, what we learn when we stay long enough to find a bit of that it gets. Take 
community-based approach and it, it really ranges from these policy actions to like very direct actions where we're working on hunger on a local basis or we're working on healthcare in a, in a national scope. I pour so much of myself out that I will lose some sort of sense of where I'm at and how I'm oriented and so music becomes very important and the community becomes very important. I look to those places for strength and groundedness and if I'm being honest I don't know if you reconcile all of those parts. I don't know if we ever get there. It's not a static point. You don't just like that you don't just get to point B and you're okay. It's like a daily process. It's a daily renewal. It's a commitment and a discipline and a practice to commit yourself to being well and to knowing that you you can operate from this place of abundance and have, have something to share. I think that sense of worth you get from serving others, maybe that's something that we retain. Maybe we get to keep um, that part of ourselves that we give away. Every step's a little bit lighter when you know um, you have something to give. Because I think you need like a working language to describe your experience and we're not often given those tools. So like what are we experiencing as American students, let alone service members? Like our youths in this country don't know how to deal with the problems they're dealing with. To kind of like firmly plant yourself and to know who you are, how are we supposed to get that done? When you don't have access to quality health care, quality education, and in some parts of this country like, you know, quality water, quality air, when we're not meeting these like very fundamental human needs and when we're so insecure, how can we figure out how to really to live and get the most out of it? And, and I know that everyone feels the same and we're so unwilling to admit our fear and confusion and because we won't admit it, because we won't name it, we can't ever deal with it. So I think holding space for a deeper conversation, one where we can be productive with our feelings and with our experience, but I think we have to do it. I just encourage people to keep a soft heart and a tough mind and, and to love unrelentingly. Oh no, cannot stop singing. Can't stop singing. 